Welcome everyone to the Conway, Massachusetts <coughs> Select Board meeting of Monday, July 1st, 2024. Call the meeting to order. If you all don't mind, we'll go ahead and skip all the way to the joint meeting with board assessors. So we can uh, discuss a, a preliminary discussion on the amount set aside for senior and veterans tax work off program. So, <laughs> we have George and Jan with us. Um, do you all want to start? I, I think Veronique might want to okay. start. Sure. Um, so, this program is needs to be sort of discussed between a number of different part departments, between assessors, treasurers, select board, which means my involvement, um, because there are a number of decisions that have to be made. So I just thought Jen and um, Stephen Casey mm -hmm. and George and I met last week to have kind of, of a preliminary discussion to see who's responsible for what since it's new and <coughs> what we wanted to sort of recommend. Um, so some of, the, some of the main decisions are how much money does the town want to set aside for this program? Um, how many, how much money per participant, the minimum wage is 15 an hour. They typically are 100 hours, which would be about 1,500 per person. Um, and then we have to find the jobs for people to do. So, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of nuances that kind of go into it. So, Stephen actually has some contacts in Amherst and Jan and I are gonna meet with some people with Stephen and Amherst, hopefully on Wednesday morning, to just answer questions that we have about some of the other details. But, I mean, if you want, we can talk about what the four of us talked about in terms of recommendations. Um, George made an excellent point, which is when you start a program, start slow, oh, yeah. <laughs> ease into it. Um, so, our, our, after going back and forth about this for a while, by the way, the amount comes out of the overlay. Whatever is done here comes out of the overlay. So we're going to have to um, take it out of that. We're going to have to add it in for next year's overlay, whatever amount it is. So our, our recommendation was that we would start small with just five people, which if you went with 100 hours at 15 an hour would be $1,500 off for each of those five people on their taxes, which would only come to about 7,500, just so we can get our feet under us and work out any kinks in the program. And, and uh, so that was, that was our recommendation. Some of the jobs, which of course are the important ones, um, I'd like to have a couple people work with me on the guide to Conway. That would probably only be a one-year project, but um, every year we'll have somebody who will also need to help stuffing all the bag stickers into envelopes, which does take, I don't know, quite a few hours. Um, it was suggested maybe, and I've talked around a little bit about this, whether we could have somebody do a little bit of cleaning or, or possibly some gardening, although there really isn't much in the way of gardening, but possibly some cleaning under the highway um, department supervision. And then the Board of Assessors said that they would have a job for somebody um, in the coming year for sure for the coming yeah um, comparing cards mm -hmm. so that that actually is only five jobs that you know we kind of see anyway so that's another reason to just limit it to five people as we get our feet under us um, do we have any sense of interest yes because I did put in the Conway Currents for people to email me so I've started okay. the spreadsheet and I've got at least five people already wow okay. so so those are some of the, the things that have to be worked out. One of the questions I need to just get squared away, I didn't happen to see anything in the Mass General Laws for this, but how, whether or not the Select Board has sole discretion in setting the income limits for this and how that works. Jim brought up a great point about that we already have a senior exemption. Do you want to explain about? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there are personal exemptions for seniors, for low-income qualifying seniors, so would this be in addition to that? Just, People know. have to apply for those exemptions, correct? Yes. Yeah. 
And you know, the questions of where you set the income limits, would they be similar to that? Or would you have something different? Income limits for people that qualify yes. to do this job, mm -hmm. jobs. Yeah. So then there has to be a whole, sorry, a whole selection process mm -hmm. set up too. Right, and somebody had suggested to me, you know, well, so let's say that we have a number of seniors who qualify for the exemption, so they get the exemption and then the board decides that, you know, people who don't qualify for the exemption going up, then they're, they're eligible for this. I don't know if that's how it will work out, but somebody had recommended to me that perhaps you go with the lowest income after the exemption's on up, you know, mm -hmm. so you're helping the neediest in town. And, but those are all decisions that we'll get more information about how that works and bring it back to the board to be able to say, okay, here's your options to yeah. decide on. So we've yeah. discovered that it is a, um, a taxable, it's, it's federal, the, the earnings are federally taxable, so it has to be oh processed through payroll and they have to get a W-2. They have to be a qualified employee, meaning um, an I-9, you know, all that, all, all that. Corey check. Oh my goodness. Tax Our, work off is taxable. Every, <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. That is just, so it's not, <laughs> it's not um, state taxable, but it's federal taxable. Okay. So it has a tiny little cost to the town. I calculated on my way in the door today. If we started with a $7,500 program, the cost to the town for Medicare would be just over $100, and the unemployment tax is around $10. So, um, tiny little cost to the town, so that's kind of negligible. Yeah, I think it's important to definitely try to figure out um, who would be eligible or who we should be looking at. Because mm -hmm. uh, if we're only looking at um, five people, you know, we might have to get into either a lottery system or, like you said, go for the lowest income, but there could be multiple people at the same mm -hmm. yes. point of lowest income. Yeah, but you also have to uh, fit them for qualification. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. You have some people that yeah. might not Yeah, if there's accommodations some that are needed, right? Mm -hmm. That's very true. Well, I mean, if you're doing clerical work, but there's somebody that's just not suited for clerical work or gardening work, they, mm -hmm. they can't, um, you know, are not physically able to do that, so that you have to qualify for the position right. available, too. And what's the oversight to ensure that the working hours are accurate? That would be departmental, I would assume. It'll be departmental. Whoever, um, you know, has the job, like the Board of Assessors, would keep track of whoever's doing that. I'd keep track of at least three of them, and then we'd see about the... I mean, some of the things you all mentioned as far as jobs are great, but their jobs that are currently being done are just kind of monotonous, right? Um, it would be great to incorporate things that we don't have time for. Yeah, in the Dalton one that I just sent out, they start off with a list of potential assi assignments to the examples. And some of them actually, you know, um, I haven't approached the planning board or the CONCOM, but recording secretaries to take minutes for boards and commissions. If somebody were able to zoom in, because um, we're talking seniors, so we don't really want them driving at night to meetings, but if they could zoom in and take minutes or do something like that, um, we don't have school crossing guards and we don't have library pages, so that's that was the biggest issue from the beginning, is trying to figure out what jobs, because a lot of them are What about digitizing public records? Um, we don't really have a program set up for that. I mean, Lori's doing hers, but I don't know that she wanted, I think I'd asked her if she had any jobs and she didn't. So, um, you know, we can, we, we're just, we're a small town, so we don't have a huge number. And, you know, this first year will kind of help us figure out if there are other places. Um, I might be able to have somebody help me some more with some filing for sure. Yeah. Um, so I think some of her concerns were some of her records are irreplaceable and if they were to be damaged in any way then she'd want to be responsible herself for that, not yeah. passing it on to someone else. Well, somebody could handle them while another person could take the documents that are either scanned or whatever and, mm -hmm. and categorize, categorize yeah. permanent folders mm -hmm. and whatnot. I mean, I definitely think it's the kind of thing you just got to get going, like you got to 
you got to launch it and and be planful, but Let also you're going to have to work kinks out along the way. Well, that's why I love George's point yeah, to start out. Well, you're, small. Yeah, exactly right. Start small, build from there. Yeah. I mean, those income levels are super low in the Dalton thing. Yeah. Well, that was from 2002. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, they had it for yeah. A while. I mean, that's like. Yeah. Um, it, is this, are we going to limit the number of years or consecutive years that people can participate? Like, if someone gets, like, if, that's, they, that's if they get the question. write off yeah. the first, you know, one year, then does that mean we're going to. Somebody else. They're not eligible to apply, like, I think that's the only second fair, year. fair, right? It seems. Yeah. Right. And that may be something that the board wants to revisit each year because. Yeah, depending on the interest. On how much interest. Uh, my sense from what I've seen so far is there's definite interest. So, um, you know, but I don't know how many. Yeah. It would seem logical that if you found someone who volunteers who did the job well, that you'd want you, to keep I know people are going to come back rather than having to, like, you know, mm -hmm. train someone else. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you know, it seems like not entirely fair to, you know, if you find five give good people the first year and you just want to keep using mm -hmm. them over and over again. Then. Although it does seem reasonable to assume that after we sort of try this out for a year that we can grow the program. Yeah. Right. It's true. If there's demand for it mm -hmm. and we have a better sense of jobs work well and, and start seeing thing, other opportunities, as you suggest, you know, digitizing data. Right. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that in the second year, they'll, our experience will show us how to grow it, and that may not be a problem. You can keep right. the good people on and, and add some new ones. And we're still looking at not just seniors, but veterans? It's both, program. yes. Okay. Yes, it's both. So how do you know. verify the veterans' DD-214s? Like, Good question. <laughs> and what type of veterans are we talking about? Only veterans that were honorably discharged? <laughs> well, right now, veterans get tax breaks and they fill out applications with the attendant uh, discharge paperwork. Right. So what's I assume it would be a version of that. <clears throat> so, would you select the people that already get those benefits, or would you select people who don't? It's the same questions with the senior. Exactly. Right, yeah. yeah. And just see, I had originally been under the mistaken impression we needed to start this for July 1st, but do you want to talk about the how the year would work? Yeah, it, so. seems, it seems as though uh, you would collect uh, the time worked up until just before the tax bill is to be issued, and then you would process the payroll, you know, take the taxes out, figure out the net amounts for each one, then that goes to the assessors and they would write an abatement that would be applied prior to issuing the tax bill. Those are our very preliminary thoughts. Uh, really, I'm interested to see how Amherst runs theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's a, a, a municipality that's already doing this well, we should just, you know, not reinvent the wheel. Exactly. Yeah, I think our three examples so far are Dalton, Greenfield, and so Amherst. So September or something. Right, so it would go through, so it would start. It could start any time right now, right, building up for FY26 taxes. It could, but we would want to set like a set year, wouldn't we? Right, so we want to have the beginning starts. and end period. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. so at least we know it didn't have to start today, which was my concern. Um, yeah, but are there any other questions the board wants us to? Well, I'm just kind of wondering what information we should send out prior to the applicants, right? Because they're going to want to know they're going to be taxed on mm -hmm. the, the money they earn. And then they'll probably want to know what jobs might be available. Right. Yeah, look. You know, or the restrictions. Dalton's got it right all on the first page. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So one thing you have to consider is most of the earnings will be um, will not hit the minimum level to be taxed. Right. So. Right. Um, that'll that'll depend how you process payroll too. So if you if someone works through the whole year, mm -hmm. and they you know make fifteen hundred dollars, obviously that's going to be taxed. But if they work, if we pay them every two weeks. They're not going to have withholdings. 
I don't mean tax, I mean withholdings. Right. That's another uh, consideration that I just thought of now that I haven't thought of. Yeah. How are the people addressing this? Do they pay them every two weeks? Not pay them, but process the payroll every two weeks. Or do they let it accumulate to the end? I would mean, bet accumulate. Yeah, it would be a nuisance to have to process yeah. all that every couple weeks. Definitely. But if you do, then it may hit the tax tables. Yeah. But maybe, maybe these people are already exempt. Mm -hmm. Now, did we? Are we just picking the min the minimum wage as a? Well, that's a board decision as well. No, I think it. Well, it says to pay no more than minimum yeah. wage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the MGL. Yeah. Okay. Then we want to pay at least minimum wage. Uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't. If they state that, then there's one only one one thing to one option. You yeah. don't go below and don't go yeah. above. You're stuck at it. Um, That's an easy decision. Yeah. yeah. Although they do change, it does change January. F doesn't it often change January first if it's going to change the minimum wage. I think so. we would probably know by now, though, right? If they're going to change for F. Yeah. Okay. So we're probably safe for FY twenty. Good question. We can look into it. Can we get a? Um, uh, a draft for a program like this? Yes, yes. So once we get our questions answered, then we can get together and write up a draft of all the paperwork that you've seen mm -hmm. um, for you all. To, do you want us to, to just start out with the assumption that it's going to be five people and $15? Yes, I think that's good, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Do you know what Dalton has expanded this to? Like, are they still at only five people? Did you said this was from 2002? Well, yeah, but I don't know how many people they do. Okay. No, that was that was our recommendation. Do we have a contact for Amherst? Yes, yes so Jan going, and I... We're going Wednesday morning okay, yeah. to meet with them. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, I and think we're all in agreement. Let's start small with five, 1,500 each, 75 max total. I think once you get it going, people will start thinking of tasks. You know, different mm -hmm. forms yeah. and whatever mm -hmm. we'll start thinking of, of what can't we keep up with or what do we need help with. So, mm -hmm. yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know, I mean, another possibility um, we could throw out there is maybe doing something at the Conway Mall if somebody wants to work oh, off. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, in sorting stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, Sure, Kat would appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bustling place. It yes. Is. Did you need anything from us as a board? No. Um, well, eventually we will. We'll yeah, need yeah. that number. Right. Um, it was all just preliminary discussions and letting you know how, you know, how we're starting to think about this and mm -hmm. keep you updated as it comes into shape. Great. Yeah, so so it's we'll nice to be able to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with, you know, it's, I've seen it come up for several town meeting votes, and it's been tabled every time because there's no answers to a lot of questions. Right. So the the state is starting to answer some questions, and other towns are starting to model it. So it seems like the right time to get started. Yeah, so we'll come back to you with, well, I'll update you in my administrator update about what we're learning, and then we'll develop some samples and then send them to you for the discussion. Well, thank you, George and Jan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your name is Mira. I don't know. If you, it's up to you if you wanted to discuss the, the vault. The vault, yes. Uh, I can represent the assessors in that discussion if you'd like to hang around. Is supposed to be coming for that? Or? No, I just, Thanks, Why don't we move on to that so we're not keeping you then? No rush. So, thanks. thanks. Um, yeah, so I, I read through the report. It was exactly what I expected, obviously. You can tell outside by looking at the wall where the water damage is coming from and seeping in. Um, I guess the discussion should be on um, the immediate things that can be done that aren't going to break the budget. Um, there are some, uh, obviously, some points on here we'll have to go 
uh, go over with Ron um, to see what can be mediated. Um, I, I think some of it's pretty self-explanatory and easy to keep things off that wall, away from the wall. We obviously can't start breaking down the wall and putting in insulation or thinking that uh, there's going to be a lot of repair work right away. But, but could we at least get a quote for that work? Or yeah, and and um, one of the things he mentioned, which I don't know how expensive it would be, but putting that barrier, um, you know, well, as he as he mentioned in the report, for those at home who haven't read this, there's there where the vault is, there's a, a window well where he thinks a lot of the moisture is probably coming in between the walls, you know, it's going it's down. Going down. Right. And um, so whether there's some way that we can get a quote for sealing that up. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is just for the short term, if it's okay if I buy a moisture meter to keep in there, just so that the clerk and assessor's office can look at that every once in a while and just see what the humidity is like in there. Um, he had suggested, I didn't see it in here, but he had suggested that we have a fan blowing into the vault. The, the door sort of slightly cracked, just have a, having a fan blowing in. As long as we're absolutely 100% um, sure there's no mold, because you do that and you're just spreading mold. Well, you're blowing it into the... Yeah, but that's how mold spreads. Well, yeah, well, that was his recommendation, so I don't think he thought that the mold was actually a huge problem. And when Lori looked at it, she said there were only a couple of folders that actually had any on it. We'd have to remove those folders. You don't I want to- I think she already has. Okay. Yeah, I think she's already done that. Can you run a dehumidifier in No. The problem with the dehumidifier is the same issue. You're pushing air like you would with a fan. You're and pushing then, air, but you're also bringing moisture in. Right. And circulating mold spores that are, yeah. that are there. Yeah. And we'd have to drill through the wall <coughs> to get both electric, there's no electric in there, mm -hmm. and the drainage. Yeah. So it's all all issues. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there's some other easy things that could be done. You could cut the branch, the lower branches on the trees out there to allow more light in, mm -hmm. um, to to uh, dry that area on the side. I think that's a pretty easy start. Mm -hmm. Rain cap. Didn't you put a new roof on this place? At some point yeah, I think the roof wasn't it insulated through the Green Communities Act yeah. thing. I think there was some work done there, but I don't think that affects, unfortunately, that side. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no gutters like in most of the <laughs> most of the buildings around here, but there's also no drain cap. Like if you go out there, the water is just pouring off of the roof straight down, and it's been doing it for so long, it's created a recession, and then water just holes in that That's area design yeah i mean that was their long-term recommendation but that doesn't I mean to me that seems like something that's relatively low-hanging fruit just to yeah. install a, a gutter in the downspout and we could do the i can't remember what they're called there's it's not a french drain because it's above ground mm -hmm. but there is another type of drainage system that can be installed for relatively cheap and i think that should be an option as well but you know, just so the um, so everybody is it feels better about the records that are already in there. You know, as long as we're keeping stuff off that wall, that we took out the documents that were contaminated with mold, separate that, and then I, I agree you should get a uh, a moisture meter just to make sure okay. that we don't go above the sixty percent is really when it gets to the wet threshold. And get some estimates on gutters immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can talk with Ron about yeah, getting estimates for definitely. some nice work. Um, it was interesting, because he did mention in there to his recommendation to do this again when the building was fully staffed, but the thing is that there weren't any more people than there normally would have been in yeah. there. So I don't know that that's going to make any difference. No, I don't um, think so. Yeah. And also for the shelving that Lori has to worry about the stuff that was up against that wall and because it's metal and it's more likely to condense and then be a problem to replace it with something else that wouldn't do that. So that's something else we could look at. Yeah, that's a 
Those Barely sills. Inexpensive fix. Yeah. Those sills at the bottom are also not tilted. It doesn't look like from the photos. I'd have to go look out there. Mm -hmm. They have to be tilted down so the water goes off of them. Otherwise, the water stays and it can seep in. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of things that could be done that should be done anyway for the preservation of not only the documents but the building itself. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, we should just talk to Ron about okay. next steps. Okay. I'm curious about all those metal panels, even the ones between the windows. Why? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like, there's brick and then the metal panels. What were the metal panels for? Why was that done? Yeah, I think we'd have to find the blueprints to see if there's anything in the original or... Right, if there's anything behind them. Yeah. Did they insulate? Did they yeah. favor seal? Probably not. Did they caulk it? Well, one of the things he mentioned was that when you have a building that's brick and concrete, yeah. you already have a layer there that creates a moisture problem. Yep. And that's what this building is. Brick and concrete. Brick face and concrete. So <laughs> it's unfortunately the, the building materials are the kind of the issue already. Oh great. Oh, thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, George, did you have anything you wanted to add or well, I don't know. my concern the documents that are in the vault at present. And I was hoping these guys would be able to tell us which of the documents are contaminated and which are not. Uh, which are, you look at the short term recommendations, the, the implication is that you just have to pull what you have away from the moist walls and you should be okay. But earlier, under conclusion recommendations, he talks about uh, determining which documents may have been contaminated and to deal with them somehow, mm -hmm. to restore them professionally, to digitize them, to get rid of them. Um, and I don't know that there's been any discussion about that. And, and I know that the assessors and the historical commission and Lori, the town clerk, have all, in their own intuitive way, assessed what maybe have been at risk or damaged and pulled them away and in some cases removed them from the vault. I just, I'm more concerned about the stuff that's in there now and whether we're just spreading mold around or whether any of those, those documents need to be cleaned up, however that's done. Um, so yeah, fixing the building so that we don't continue the, the root cause makes lots of sense. But I think I, 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 it makes sense to me also to ensure that the documents we have are clean when or I, removed. Yeah, when I spoke with Lori about this, the only ones that um, she you, you could tell visit, visually were damaged were in cardboard boxes of, at the base of that wall. And, that, and so she's already, to my understanding, pulled them out and dealt with them. Yeah. Um, and for the rest of it, I think it's really just a matter of making sure they stay dry. Um, yeah, that may be. I just so. I hadn't heard of any real like formal assessment by any professionals about what. Well, that could be is. awfully expensive if we had somebody come in and go through every single record in there to to see. Um, I mean, it sounds like good judgment. I mean, if it's, if it's obvious what is and isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of it was just actually the outside folders holding the papers. Yes, yeah. you should be able to visually inspect and see what's going on. Right. What's exactly, not. and she there was only two boxes, and it was only the part that was up against the wall. So I I believe she's already dealt with those, but yeah. I can double check with her. Yeah, let's just confirm for <coughs> knowing sanity check. Glory's neat nick tendencies, I would bet. So yeah. Like to say part of the discussions with Ron about building um, maintenance and uh, rehabilitation. Be happy to. Okay. Is this like a? I take it this is a newly discovered issue. Is this because of the crazy amount of rain we've had or had or? The phosphorescent wasn't noticed until earlier this year, I believe. And it, but it was pretty early in the year. Okay. I think the floods kind of exacerbated the problem. It may have been going on to a small degree yeah. before, but I think the major flooding really yeah. okay. brought it to light. 
which I guess in a way is a good thing because we might not have noticed it. Right. No, I think it is a good thing. We probably had some prevention in some ways. In speaking with um, the gentleman who was here, he was saying that we're in much better shape than a lot of towns he's been to and how their records are. So, mm -hmm. well, what it's worth, saw the old school. When we got out of that building in Waitley, that basement was, that was a sick building. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so and next. And then we're keeping the door open when, like, Lee's here, right? The door stays open. I don't know. I would be best to do that, to keep it open to out. Yeah, allow they've to been trying different things, not yeah. being sure what makes the most sense. I've been in there times when it's been open and crack, mm -hmm. and other times when it's been closed. Um, so I, mean, I think any guidance from these folks or whomever would probably be helpful. These seem like the right people to ask, right? Should that vault be sealed up or should it just be open? Um, well, maybe I should get two moisture meters, one for the room itself and then one for the vault. So if the vault's closed, yeah. it's probably best. Yeah. You can, I have three at my house. So you can get a pack <laughs> of three for like 15 okay. bucks. Okay. Because one of the and things- they, And they work? Oh yeah. Is this like a Home Depot thing or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there wasn't, when he was here speaking with us, there weren't too many options in terms of climate control in this building itself, just because of, you know, we have the windows and air conditioning doesn't really help, you know, and if it's the windows, window air conditioners. So. All right, so next steps, we'll talk with Ron <coughs> yes. about next steps, and I'll buy, buy a couple moisture meters. Any other further discussion on the vault? Has um, the Historical Commission seen this report yet? I sent it to everybody that I knew was interested and said to please pass it on. So I'm hoping. It was on the agenda. Yeah. Last Friday. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again, George. Um, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank I'm you. Assuming so questions with respect to the regional planning answer or got your answer for me. Oh, for Jeff Lacey? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Assuming he's fine with being nominated without knowing about it. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> best equipped. It's okay. a problem I get back to you. Okay. <laughs> what do they say about when you don't show up to a meeting that you get a point? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> You're in charge. Uh, moving to the top of the agenda, agenda uh, vote to approve the minutes of June 17th. Um, those looked good to me. I move to approve the minutes. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, we had a lot of big warrants today. Um, the payroll just came in. We looked over the uh, payroll uh, deduction warrants and the um, payable accounts warrants. Um, so everything looked good to me. I had a couple questions that were answered. I'm going to vote to approve the accounts payable warrant, warrant 2501, in the amount of $326,517.03. The uh, accounts payable warrant. 24-28 in the amount of $159,877.32. The payroll warrant, 25-02 in the amount of $140,299.88. And finally, the deduction, payroll deduction warrant, 25-02 in the amount of $32,284.06. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, meetings attended by select board members. Erica? Um, none. That's our last meeting. All right. Elaine? None. And none here as well, but I will say uh, earlier this week, um, we had a send off for uh, Randy Williams. Yes. It was his uh, final day as, of being a uh, police officer here in Conway. I believe 20, 28 years, 28 years, 28 years of service. Mm -hmm. So um, a big thank you to Randy and congratulations and 
Hope you enjoy your retirement with your family. Um, open to public comments. No unfinished business. Moving on to new business. Uh, a discuss, discussion and vote to create mass and motion committee and appoint, uh, appoint the members. Let me just pull this up. Is that here, right? Yeah, all of the appointments. Yeah, yeah they're all there. Yeah. And there's some overlap with the mass and motion and the council on aging, correct? But the mass and motion is like specifically a grant, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So the, actually, um, there's a representative from council on aging. Okay. There's three different reps that they kind of decided early on would be nice to have from different departments. So council of aging, planning, and board of health all have mm -hmm. reps. Okay, I'll just go through this list based on the agenda here. But do you want to vote? Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. You're going to say Do you want to same. vote to create the committee first? Because it was it was a working group under the select board before. Oh. So this would be a vote to create a formal mass and motion committee because this is, we're going on to year three. We should be getting the grant soon to sign, <clears throat> excuse me, for this fiscal year. I think it's 4230 we get annually. But it just seemed, I talked with Rachel Stoller about this, and it just seemed since this group is deciding and voting and spending town funds to make it an actual working committee that's subject to all of the meeting laws and everything just sort of seemed to make sense yeah have they not so. been doing that no they haven't been doing open meeting they've been they've been keeping minutes and things like this but i just think it's better to be yeah. a formal committee since we know it's going to be there for at least another eight years and they're prepared for all that mm -hmm. yep okay. yep so these these and I had asked them if they could let me know because um, it's best to stagger the terms so that they're not all up at right. once so these are the ones that they actually gave to us for how they decided to stagger them. Oh, okay. um, shall I make a motion <laughs> um, I move that we appoint um, Robin Yerkes and oh, we oh sorry we, the we, the we, first. Um, yeah. Yeah, that we create <laughs> A mass and motion committee and appoint all members. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I move that we appoint Robin Yerkes and Thad Bennett um, to terms ending 6 2026. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Pat Lynch, Jody Lolly, Tilda Hunting, and Kathy Lamas for terms ending 6 2025. Uh, looks like till the 26th. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Pat Lynch, Jody Lolly, and Kathy Lamas for terms ending 2025. 630 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, George Forcier and Phil Cantor for terms ending 630 2027. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Tilda Hunting for a term to end 630 2026. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, just I'm to let you know, they just bought a bench off of last year's funds, the last of last year's funds. So they will be coming to the board with some suggestions about where to place that bench in town. Oh, cool. It's a motion. They're not supposed to sit there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I move that we appoint uh, the following members to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Mark Silverman for a term to end 630 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Phyllis Crane for a term to end 630 2026. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> um, Andrew Lovechuk uh, for a term ending 630 2027. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Gary Fenton as an associate member of the planning board for a term ending 630 2027. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we can probably just read through all the dates and then vote in one shot. Okay. Um, so Pat Cocott, Council on Aging, 630-2027. Deb Donaldson, Forest and Trails, 630-2027. Carl Darrow, Hank Horseman, Sarah Williams, Historical Commission, 630-2027. And Stephanie Recor is the select board appointed member of the personnel committee, 630-2027. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Do you want to keep going with the fur cob wraps? Mm, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, no, because okay. I'm not sure exactly what some of these. Well, so the, yeah, the so the, the um, uh, public health service reps, the Board of Health have um, suggested for appointment Daniel Chef with Kathy as the alternate. Okay. So okay. Um, we, uh, I, I put down there for, okay, for the second one, if a select board member wants to be one of the appointees for the planning board, it's. That's up to either of you, otherwise it would be Veronique. Not me. Are you doing that right now? I mean, have you? No, we actually didn't have one that was vacant, but I'm happy to do it if um, none of the other, you know, no, no board members want to. I'm happy to, I mean, I already the FERCOC council prep or whatever. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, okay, great. So you'll be on the regional committee. Yeah. Great. And then. Um, it's Jeff Lacey for Jeff the Lacey. planning board. Yeah. And emergency management would stay the same with Amanda Herman and Chief Baker. Um, and Lori has agreed, unless a, another board member wants to do it, for the inspection program. Correct. That's great. Lori would be great for that. And then you've already appointed the council. Yes. Okay. Um, then I'll make a motion to vote for the FERCOG representatives, CPH reps for the FERCOG. Dan Sheff and Kathy Lamas as an alternate. Regional Planning Board, uh, Select Board Member Erica Goldman. Regional Planning Board, Planning Board Designee um, Jeff Lacey. Emergency Manager and Response Coordinators Amanda Herman, Chief Baker. The FCCIP, as we stated, Lori Lucier. And what uh, the already the FERCOG Council Representative Erica Goldman with Chris Walter as our alternate. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Now that vote was for me to sign these as well, right? I'm good to sign? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Any? I don't have any. Okay. Town admin updates. Um. There's not too much in there, uh, but uh, I did want to alert you that <clears throat> I can create a one-day pass. I don't think it's going to be a big issue, but somebody did come in and ask how they would deal with the situation if they're going away and they have their cars and somebody's house-sitting. Oh. So it's easy enough to create a one-day pass and have that person come in and sign them, then they just hand them off to the attendants. So but they still have to use the stickers for that? Correct. Yeah. They would have to, yeah, they'd have to leave them the bag stickers, but to get in without the decal, um, we could just create a one day pass and, and just keep track of that. I don't expect to have much usage out of that, but. That makes sense. Yeah. So if the board yeah. approves, I will create that. That sounds good. Totally that approve. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Um, just to uh, let you know, most people have been saying that they don't need the 104 new bank stickers. They have so many left over. Right. So I did want to let the board know that if the board decides for FY26 to reduce it to one bag a week, which would be 52, the town would then receive a nice chunk of change from the state because we'd actually have a real pay, modified pay-as-you-throw program. Mm -hmm. So something to consider for. Which we don't currently have a 104. Yeah. Do we have anyone who's used their stickers and requested more? More. For Very this few. Just a handful. Yeah, it's just been a handful mm -hmm. of people. Well, that was the whole purpose of this program. Right. You see the people that are habitual <laughs> users <laughs> exactly. and those who are. I mean, I've had average. people that literally will take the new stickers out of my hand and I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have. I don't want. I don't want. I know. I have. I have tons. Yeah. I mean, that could be me. So. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I I was going to bring this up on the uh, member comments and concerns, but just you know, added on to the town admin update, I do feel that we should add to an agenda coming soon that we change the policy to from 104 to 52 stickers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this was a trial, you know, to not a trial, but a first go to see how it would work. It's been working well. 
I do believe the amount of stickers is extreme and it's not needed for the vast majority of residents. Um, and as Veronique stated, we actually get uh, more funds from the state um, if we reduce to 52 stickers a year. Um, Veronique and I still need to work on the bulky waste uh, item checklist as well. So How much more money do we get by reducing? It's like 1750 or something yeah. like that. But since we only get like 3200 something, it, it really does increase what yeah. we get and we get this annually. Mm -hmm. And we can use it for all kinds of things, all kinds of materials that have to do with recycling. Um, so it'll help reduce our transfer station budget. Yeah. And we did get an influx of stickers because of the time we got the stickers, right? Right. Um, the, the, yeah, three months. The three months, right. But still, I mean, the vast majority of people I've talked to, like myself, have mm -hmm. well over 50% of the stickers left. Yeah. I just wonder so, about bigger families. I mean, I'm, you know. Well, that's why I'm wondering how many people have, have asked him, right. have used up their 104 and, right. have, and have come in for more. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've mentioned to people, you know, feel free to donate to a neighbor that has a lot of children or something that yeah. might need them. I have to say, I don't want to get into, we talked originally about maybe doing some kind of donation program through the town. I don't, I don't think that's a good that's, idea. Yeah, that's, because we have to thing. decide who gets and it just, I'd rather have neighbors helping neighbors than um, but it really should come down to members in a household, yeah, right? Because we don't want to pay for if somebody is Airbnb in their house and has extra waste because of that. They're making money mm -hmm. <laughs> on that. That's true. Yeah. So I think that's the way I see it. It's for people in need. Um, anyway, at, at some point, I would like to put that on our on one of our agendas to discuss the reduction of stickers going forward. Not this year, but next year. And also the bulky waste. And the bulky system. waste um, item pricing. pricing. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't put this on here, but um, Tim, it was it was a little slow going because we had to deal with some logistics. But you know, Jan had recommended that we reduce the number that we. When the, when the compactors are filled, that we make sure that the pressure is as high as we can do it legitimately. It's, it's difficult to, so we were on kind of a regular schedule for pickups. And if we can reduce that number of pickups by a certain amount during the year, we're going to be saving a lot of money. So Tim has been working with that. He took everything off automatic pickup and is now doing the call-in for um, most of them. So we're hoping. Um, that that will bring us some good savings as well up there. Um, yeah, then the platform for the recycling oh, yes. is awful, I'm sure yeah. you've seen. So we're trying to work on yeah, that is getting that replaced. The boards are popping wreck. up. It's 20 plus years old of uh, yeah. pressure treated wood that usually only lasts 15 years. So. Yeah, so a new catwalk, and we'd like to do metal, but they're not cheap. Mm -hmm. When Jan looked into it for me a couple of years ago, a town got one for ninety-six hundred. So they can be slippery too. Okay. Well, it's well, you a get grid the graded ones. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and you make sure that it's you know a slatted grid so that all the snow and ice falls through. Yeah. And just like the steps that go up right. to it. Yeah. Same. Same thing. Yeah. So. There is one in town sitting around doing nothing, so I'm trying to see if we can Where maybe get that donated. And why is it? <laughs> it's, it's OSCO. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Sure. Uh, select board member, comments, concerns? Nothing this week. Okay, no mail, no announcements. Next meeting, July 15th. Um, I'll vote to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You need to turn. Thank you very much.